an old man, a very, very old man, who was originally Cuban, but he moved to the US, and he's fishing for a living, but he's been having unlucky days for the past, well, past couple weeks, and here we are with another book review. Hello fellow book questers, it is I, Aaron the Book Quester. Today I have this awesome book to review to you guys. The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway himself. And well, let's get right on to it. So, a lot of people say this is a classic and this is like a really good novel. So I read it because m m m mostly because my dad recommended it to me. But, you know... When I get to a book, it's 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 easy enough to read it. Besides, it was it was it was pretty thin. And the old man of the sea was about a about an old man, kind of obvious, who had been having unlucky days for the past couple days. He's a fisherman, and he hasn't been able to catch much fish. And he had been supported by this little boy, who had helped him through his hard days and. He really loved the sea. He thought of the sea as a feminine, some sort of feminine deity, I guess. I mean, he certainly didn't worship the sea. He he said prayers like Hail Mary and the All Our Father, um, various times in the book. And this book is basically about an old man who one day, after having days and days of bad luck had hooked a fish that was bigger than his own boat, which is not that impressive, but really impressive. His boat is a small rift, but even so, this fish was enormous. And the old man fights against this ginormous, this ginormous fish's strength, and he pulls and he never gives up, and he perseveres and manages Finally, <clears throat> after almost two entire days and a couple, couple nights, he manages to catch the humongous fish. And this book is about, I guess, not giving up in a way, because if a fish was pulling my entire boat to, out, to the outskirts of the ocean, and, and it's been two days then since you had seen the port and the land, I would probably have given up a long time before, you know, land was out of sight because I'm seriously freak freaked out about being lost in the sea, but never mind that. And the thing is, that's just really, I don't know, it's, I feel like the old man somehow has nothing to lose or somehow respects the sea in a way that he knows that he'll be able to get back. I have no idea about that. And he endures several perils, such as sharks coming at him because of the humongous fish that's on the deck. And finally, when he manages to return, he is greeted welcome, welcomely by the boy. And the story ends, basically. The fish is the biggest one ever caught in the entire history of the fish, little fishing town. And that's pretty much it. There are some references to baseball that I do not understand. And yeah, that's it. And I'm not too sure why this is such a recommended and such a good book. I do understand the story, the plot. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not all about it in the book. I feel like there's some sort of philosoph philosophical degree, like don't give up and respect the sea. And the, the way that the old man respects the sea gave me this feeling that feeling that this old man has been through more than I could ever go through and he has realized something that I will never realize realize and that gave me that weird feeling but I don't know what that feeling is exactly and I'm not sure what it's trying to tell me so that's pretty much it I know it isn't much of a plot it's just an old man trying to catch a fish basically to put it roughly and very harshly but in some ways, I think there's some sort of philosophy and some good, all that good stuff written in the pages that I can't decipher. So if, if you read the book and you completely understand it, please write in the comment down below if you can. And like always, your book quester. 
Aaron the book question. Yeah, it's it's not a like a great thrilling plot bug. It's just it has some sort of philosophical meaning that I hope some of you out there could decipher for me.